I only have eyes for you. The ghost of a student from the 50s haunts Sunnydale High. We open in the bronze with Buffy approached by an awkward guy who asks her on a date, and she's equally awkward in return and says she will never date anyone again. Meanwhile, the girl on stage has on the ugliest dress I've ever seen in my life. I'm glad we were focused on the story of this episode. She probably worked really hard on that. You're being kind of a dick. Probably scrounged every nickel to not get enough fabric to make a real dress. <laughs> Willow tells Buffy that she needs to have more fun and try dating. Apparently, she forgot about that whole thing with Angel. But luckily, Buffy gives her and the audience a recap. Do you remember my ex-boyfriend, the vampire? I slept with him, he lost his soul. Now my boyfriend's gone forever and the demon that wears his face is killing my friends. And after talking to Buffy about how she never does anything fun, it just highlighted how boring these people would be in real life because none of them have any hobbies or interests other than maybe Willow with computers. Meanwhile, at the school, a boy and a girl are fighting and the guy is about to shoot the girl. And then Buffy shows up and beats the guy up, but unfortunately doesn't go into autopilot and stake him. Why are they walking through the school at night? They say they don't know why they were fighting, and the guy's gun seems to disappear. Principal Snyder, who we haven't seen in a while, pulls Buffy into his office the next day and says he will find out how she is somehow responsible. And I liked his explanation for why her version of the story is substantiated by everyone else. Ask the janitor. People can be coerced, Summers. I'm no stranger to conspiracy. I saw JFK. And I also liked the random message on the intercom and his reaction to it. Mr. Snyder, Billy Crandall chained himself to the snack machine again. Pathetic little no-life vegan. I wish they would just change the name of the show to Snyder the Student Slayer. <laughs> that's, that's a terrible joke. <laughs> it's not a joke, I'm being serious. And while she's sitting there, a yearbook from 1955 falls out of a bookcase. Willow is still teaching the computer science class, which is idiotic on pretty much every level. Yeah, clearly this school really cares about the quality of education their kids are getting. Well, she's also not getting paid. And it's been weeks at this point since Miss Callender died. Giles comes in and Willow tells him that she's been researching magic, which I'm sure is not a huge mistake. And she gives him a rose quartz that belonged to Miss Callender and that supposedly has healing powers. At least now I know what to buy if I get hurt instead of wasting money on a doctor visit. <laughs> in class, Buffy falls asleep slash has a vision and is back in the 1950s where she sees a student and teacher having some kind of affair. And when she comes to, the teacher is writing on the chalkboard, which for our younger viewers was basically an analog smartboard. I don't even think they use smartboards that much anymore. I didn't realize we were up to holograms now. Yeah, get Orlando Jones in the classroom. <laughs> this is <laughs> the dumbest possible. I would never have thought of that. Sorry, I meant the Red Queen. <laughs> Just keeps getting worse. Science has never been more fun. You're all going to die down here. <laughs> We're going to lick that test. <laughs> You're pretty good. We could put you in the gifted class. I want him in the nemesis program. <laughs> okay, this is so far removed from anything relating to this episode at this point. The teacher writes something on the board that the kid with the gun said earlier without realizing it. And there's a great line of dialogue from one of the students. Did you see what he wrote? Did you see what he wrote? You see what he wrote, bro? What do you think everyone is laughing at, you f***ing idiot? <laughs> After class at Xander's locker, a Zool hand reaches out and slams him into it a few times. They go to Giles, and they all have the now typical reaction where they seem more excited than worried, which reminded me that these characters are all idiots. He says it's a poltergeist, lashing out because it cannot find peace. And its issues must be resolved in order to make it leave. We randomly cut to Angel taking Drusilla and Spike to a garden, where Spike points out that it makes a terrible new hideout given that it's outside, and then the scene is over. That night, a teacher is leaving late, and as she walks by the custodian, they seem to become possessed and reenact the scene from earlier again. Giles overhears and walks out in the hall just in time to see the teacher get shot. And after he tackles the custodian, the gun disappears. Giles is trying to connect the poltergeist is Miss Calendar, despite the evidence pointing away from that conclusion. And for some reason, Buffy is dressed like she's ready to model for one of those paranormal romance book covers. I did not notice. You're paying way too much attention to people's clothes. <laughs> it was so distracting. Show. Her hair was so weird, and she's wearing, like, a black leather jacket and all this, like, I don't know. And they finally get the idea to look up past events at the school that might explain things. And Willow finds the culprits because she is a hacker and knows how to use Google. There was a student having an affair with a teacher, and they decide they're dealing with the student's ghost. 
and Willow wants to communicate with him, but Buffy says, F that, and wants to get rid of him. And I like that they didn't agree. Later in the cafeteria, the gang is sitting at an impractically small table, when suddenly snakes appear everywhere. And for some reason, they're all upset about it. I mean, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them bites Cordelia's cheek, before they all run out. Snyder and the police chief are talking about what happened, and they reveal they know about the Hellmouth, and are keeping things under wraps. Later, Willow suggests performing an exorcism. The three of them will form a triangle, and Buffy will be at the center, where they will try to bind the spirit. And Xander says the spirit seems to be fixated on Buffy, even though there's no reason to think so, because weird stuff has happened to a whole bunch of people. When they get there, all the doors slam, trapping them inside, and it turns out Giles is already there, trying to communicate with the spirit because he still thinks it's Calendar. And I thought the way the scene with the doors closing was shot was cool. Yeah, like, the hinges were pivoting when the doors <laughs> reached the resistance point. They, like, latched. It was pretty cool. I wonder where they found those doors. If they're in all other right, movies All right, let me, let me freaking talk. <laughs> um, and in the middle of all this, there's another pointless scene with Angel and the others where nothing happens. The gang splits up, and Buffy sees the teacher and student dancing. And the student's face turns into a gross face, but it actually looked really cool. Willow starts sinking into the floor. Xander encounters more snakes. And Cordelia's snake bite becomes infected with CGI. Buffy has another vision where he sees the student kill the teacher, and then he grabs her and screams at her to get out. Giles rescues Willow and finally admits that the ghost is not Miss Calendar, and they all perform the spell. Since they're having to do stuff relating to magic, I wondered why they didn't try talking to Amy. But then they could call her for pretty much every episode, couldn't they? Yeah, well, that was my next thought, too. And then a swarm of wasps show up and chase them all outside. We just can't escape those CGI wasps. There were so many of them. And people must live near the school, right? I did think Buffy kicking open the door was cool when they went outside. Yeah, those doors were such good actors this whole episode. <laughs> he took the hit well. And when they go to Buffy's house, of course, her mom's not there. Buffy realizes that the student wants forgiveness for killing his teacher but says he doesn't deserve it before storming out. Yeah, as usual for the show, the thematic connections were way overdone, and Buffy way overreacted, and Cordelia pointing it out doesn't make it any less annoying. When Buffy is alone, she's called back to the school. And the bugs let her in. Giles says she's being called by the spirit, which wants to recreate what happened, but with a happy ending this time, which doesn't match up with what he said earlier about it wanting forgiveness. Giles says there's no danger of her getting shot, because there's no one else inside the school to shoot her. But it's already manifested all kinds of stuff. Why couldn't it just generate a body? I mean, it already manifested the student and the teacher. It could even be an inanimate object. Yeah, like a door. Yeah. I think a door would have done a really nice job here. I don't understand why we're arguing. This is so open and shut. <laughs> you need to stop latching on to me. <laughs> You okay. just locked up your heart and threw away the key. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell do you... Do you just think of puns like when you're walking around during yes, the day? Yes, all the time. Oh, man. The whole plot is hinging on this relationship. What a knob. <laughs> <laughs> While Buffy wanders the halls, Angel shows up, and they get possessed. But Angel is the teacher, and Buffy is the student, proving that Giles doesn't know what he's talking about when he says there needs to be a man to play the student. After Buffy shoots Angel, she goes to the band room to kill herself, but since Angel is undead, he approaches her as the teacher and forgives him. Oh, sorry, f him, her. God, it's so confusing. <laughs> and it allows their spirits to be at peace. And Buffy almost has a moment with Angel, kind of, but he shoves her away and leaves. And I actually like that moment. Later, Buffy mopes and says that the spirit focused on her because it identified with her sadness. Giles asks, Does it matter? And Buffy says, No. I guess not. And they're right. This episode doesn't matter. At their hideout, Angel says he's upset because the possession forced him to feel love, so he needs to kill something. So he and Drusilla run off. And as he prepares to go, he puts on a shirt, doesn't button it up, and then puts on a coat and doesn't button it up. What the hell? <laughs> Again, I think you're way too focused on people's clothes in this show. I think he looks like an idiot. And why does he still put gel in his hair when he's a freaking vampire that's going out <laughs> killing people at night? I mean... That's what you're focused on? Yeah, I thought it was dumb. Okay. And Spike is ready to enact his revenge on Angel when he reveals he hasn't needed the wheelchair. And he stands up for himself and physically. <laughs> <laughs> 
what a badass, super strong vampire. He can walk. Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) It's about time that he did something, or hopefully he's going to do something. I'm still skeptical. Yeah, I hope he does too. I only have eyes for you, overall. This wasn't a bad episode. I feel like I say that for a lot of these. I liked the student's gross face makeup. That was really cool. The themes were connected, but again, it was so obvious and just shoved in her face. I don't know if they think we're stupid or if they know we're stupid, (laughs) (laughs) but it's getting tiring. I liked all the various things happening at the school, like the sinking floor and the wasps and stuff. I'm glad they took advantage of having a poltergeist by having poltergeist type things happening, but I'm tired of Buffy still moping and not moving forward with this plot point and Giles still being hung up on calendar. Hopefully that moves forward too. I'm gonna give it a C plus. It was a little bit better than average. I gave it a C minus. I did read that this episode was partially inspired by the movie Poltergeist, which was not a surprise, but all those random things, like the snakes and the wasps and the weird whirlpool floor thing, have nothing to do with the ghost situation. They just all happened for no reason. And the lame connections drawn in bright neon between Buffy and the ghost didn't need to be specifically pointed out by the characters. It was way too much. And the episode shifts to Angel a few times for seemingly no reason other than to remind us that he exists. Giles thinking that the ghost was Miss Calendar was a subplot that didn't go anywhere. There were small things scattered throughout that I liked, and it was good to finally get some more Principal Snyder, as well as a bit more about the authorities knowing about the Hellmouth, although that hasn't gone anywhere yet either. But mostly this episode felt like a bunch of nonsense that we're supposed to just go along with just because. We're getting pretty close to the end of Season 2, and I really hope Spike and Drusilla are actually going to do something, because they've just been waiting in the wings for literally half a season at this point, and even Angel's activity only seems to matter every few episodes. I hope they all die, so that we can move on to something else. Maybe build toward an epic battle with Principal Snyder, that they can only win by having Buffy's mom come in to sue the school. That would be cool. (laughs) So I thought this was a pretty disappointing episode, but not terrible. Just kind of not great. Yeah, we've had quite a few of those. It's not getting me very pumped. Agreed. So look forward to our review of the next one. 